Hi there, welcome to this Brooks audio tutorial on EQing headphones. Why would you want to do such a thing? Well, maybe you travel quite a lot, you don't have reference monitors with you and you need your headphones to be as accurate as possible when you're mixing your music. Or maybe you're getting into listening to or making binaural recordings and you need your headphones to be as transparent as possible to get the most out of those recordings. Well, this tutorial is for you. Let's go. Okay, so to EQ our headphones, what do we need? Well, first we need the information about the frequency response of our headphones in order to correct it. Um, now, there are a couple of different resources out there. I'm going to post the links around the video in the normal places. Um, the first one is from this person, Jacko Pasanen, uh, and then there's another one from uh, um, uh, Oratory1990. Um, again, I'll post both of those links. Um, my headphones are DT990s, Bayer Dynamic. So um, you can see uh, on this list just how many headphones there are. So hopefully yours will appear on the same list as well. Um, I need to find Bayer Dynamic DT990s. And you can see that you've got the 200, 250 ohm version, which is what I have. Um, and you've got one with or without worn ear pads. So mine aren't too bad at the moment, I think. So I'll just go for the standard measurement. And what you can see, when you scroll down, as you can see that there's various different measurements shown on this graph. So how have they made this? Well, what we can see is we can see the raw data represented by the black line. This is a recording of the headphone um, with a microphone using some kind of broadband content. So it would either be pink noise or it might be a, a, a sine sweep, a sinusoidal sweep that they've used to then FFT, which you can Google, this to make this graph. Um, and so the, the, the raw frequency response of the headphone is, is this black line. And then here is shown an equalized version, which you can see is mostly equal and opposite of these different lumps and bumps. And when the idea is that when you put this EQ curve into your equalizer, then you'll be able to create a more consistent and a flatter response for the headphone. So, um, let's have a look at the other option. So if we look at the uh, DT990 um, with fresh ear pads in this, in this instance, there's also another graph that you can uh, download and you can see a frequency response here uh, without, uh, without EQ and with EQ. So um, this, uh, yeah, you can see that it's much, much flatter here. This shows, uh, this is much easier to read um, after you've applied the EQ curve um, from the Oratory 1990, this would be the curve here. Um, so once that EQ is, is added together, the EQ total will look like this. When this is uh, applied to the raw frequency response, it will outcome, it will output something much flatter here. That's the idea. Now, which one's better? I propose that you try both and you see which one you prefer. So let's just minimize this. I've done that um, uh, using Pro-Q3. So here in Ableton, I've got uh, my Pro-Q3 and I've got two presets, one of the Jaco Pasanen curve and one of the Oratory 1990 curve. And you can see actually they're not that different or they, they have similarities at least in terms of the overall trend here. Peaks, the peaks are roughly in the same place and the and the uh, the cuts are in roughly the same place. It's just there are varied amounts of them. So I think really what it comes down to is using your ears and having a listen. So let's just try, let's just add a, a, a new EQ here. I'm just going to start from scratch and show you the process. So here you have a list. This is actually the Jaco Pisanen um, uh, curve. So if we have another quick look at Safari, I can show you how to get that. Um, so here is a, a parametric EQ table. So you need to copy this and paste that into a text editor, or you can read it directly from the website. In the case of the oratory version, there is a, a, a table here with the filter settings for you to copy. Once you have that detail, you can then start to apply those values to different filters. So add a filter. It's in the case of the um, 
the Jaco Pasanen version. It's all peak filters. It's all bell filters in the case of Pro-Q is referred to as a bell filter. So you take the frequency, 21 hertz, add 6 dB of gain, and then you have a, a bandwidth of 0 0.95, 0 0.95. And you can just double click on the EQ um, settings here um, and add those values. So let's look at band number two. You can Pick the frequency of 177 hertz, a gain of minus 3.9, and a bandwidth of 0 0.66. And there you go. That's how you start to build this up. You add all of those values, and then you'll end up with something that looks like this. Now, you can apply this directly to your master bus in Ableton. But of course, you have to remember when you render your track, uh, that you must turn it off um, because of course the last thing you want to do is render your master with this EQ curve on it it's going to sound extremely strange to other people on when they get uh, listening to it on speakers so this is a temporary thing you add this EQ just while you're monitoring through headphones you would add it right at the end of your master chain um, and then before you render you must turn it off, bypass it. Um, the other thing to, to, to note is that because quite a lot of these EQs are positive, it will, uh, if, you've, if you're driving this from a mastering plugin like Pro-L, for example, it will clip the EQ because you're adding extra level through the EQ. So you will need as well a preamp stage, which is what the uh, Jaco Pisanen, um uh, pub the data publishes what, uh, what you should cut before you add the EQ. So in the case of Ableton, what you could do is you could um, create a new, uh, a new group, right? a new audio effects rack. You could um, add to this, you could add a utility to this, and you could do a pre- gain of 6.2 dB going into this. So this becomes your headphone monitoring EQ. And that can come, you can turn that off and on when you need to. So you can also save that as a preset in your, uh, in your user library as your headphone monitoring EQ. And that will say, save that whole data you can just drag that into any any project in the future now there is a better way that i've found to apply these kind of processes and that is using um, a, a piece of software from rogue amoeba called sound source and and here i've set this up as an example so when i listen to binaural content um, i often use google chrome because i'm using youtube uh, to listen to vr or, or 360 recorded content so my logic is, well, I need uh, the, the, my headphone corrective EQ inserted over Google Chrome. And the great thing about SoundSource is it allows you to do that. So you can add a plugin um, on an output of a piece of software, and you could do the same with Ableton. So you could add a plugin on the output of Ableton. So it, effectively, the good way to think of it is it's inserting it between the output, the very output of Ableton, and where it comes out of your whichever sound card output you have that assigned to. So this is one of the curves here, and it's actually inserted always on the output of Google Chrome. Of course, when I come to listen to anything through Chrome on speakers, I need to turn that off, but I can, I can do that really straightforward and really simply. So SoundSource is a really powerful uh, piece of software to allow you to, uh, to do this kind of thing. The question is, what if you don't have Pro-Q3? Well, the reason I use this is because it has linear phase. Linear phase means that you can adjust the magnitude, i.e. the volume of a certain frequency band without changing the phase. Now, this comes into play when you're inserting lots of different bands and they're overlapping. You could cause all kinds of problems with the phase response of the output. So I would recommend that a linear phase EQ is a good choice. Which one you use is entirely up to you. Thanks for joining me. Hope you got a lot out of this. Please drop me a message either in the comments or to bill at brooksaudio.co.uk. 
Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more tips and tricks coming at you soon. And in the meantime, big up. Peace.